Happy Monday, everybody. I'm Amy Holmes, filling in for Steve Malzberg on the Steve Malzberg Show today. Steve's off celebrating the Jewish holiday for Rosh Hashanah. Thanks for joining us. Joining me now is Republican Congressman Mike Pompeo, member of the House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence and member of the House Select Committee on Benghazi. Congressman, great to have you on the show today. Thanks for joining us. Amy. Hey, it's great to be with you. Thanks for having me on the show today. A pleasure. So, Congressman, I want you to take a quick listen to our Secretary of State, John Kerry, making the case that we have to support the Iran deal if we want to stop them from getting a nuclear weapon. Take a listen. What I can tell you is, if we walk away from this agreement, given the suspicions that the Supreme Leader had about even entering into negotiations with us, we will have proven their worst fears that you can't deal with the West, you can't trust the West, therefore they have to go do what they have to do to protect themselves. And they will get a weapon one way or the other as a result of not accepting this agreement. So Congressman, what do you make of that, of the Secretary of State saying that we need to prove our moral high ground, our trustworthiness to the Islamic Republic and not the other way around it seems? I find it uh, disgusting, demoralizing, and uh, the, the, the most ignorant of statements that you can possibly imagine for our, our Secretary of State to say that the reason that Congress has to approve the deal is because the President has cut, it, cut an arrangement with the Ayatollah that doesn't work for the American people. Um, but if, we, if Congress says no, we'll, we'll offend them while they're chanting death to America. I, just, I find it incomprehensible. It's incredible. So, Congressman, uh, the House approved a resolution that you authored. Uh, it was it was passed last Thursday, two, 245 votes to 186, declaring that the White House has not met the requirements of the law, allowing Congress to review the Iran deal it's in its entirety. Uh, so what do you hope is going to come of this vote? Well, I hope, Amy, that what we will do is we will make it very, very difficult for companies to take advantage of the fact that our president has decided to lift commercial sanctions on doing business with Tehran. We will put, we'll put these businesses in, in a position with at least them having to stare at the fact that the House of Representatives has decided that, you know, Corker Cardin hasn't run, and therefore the president doesn't have the authority to lift sanctions because of the secret side deal. Uh, the president doesn't have that authority, and so... Uh, the president's likely to proceed uh, next week or this one and lift those sanctions. But I, I have to tell you, if you're out there thinking about investing in Iran, you, you should consider the fact that it is the House of Representatives' view that the president does not have the authority to do that. And the risk that comes with that, either when the next president comes into office or if the House should decide that we want to press our case and litigate this issue, mm -hmm. uh, presents enormous risk if you're going to take the capital of your company and invested in Iran when the president didn't have the authority to lift those sanctions. Right. So you mentioned that the president, that the White House has not shared with Congress these side deals between the International Atomic Energy Agency and Iran. Why do you suppose that is? You didn't want us to see them, Amy. Uh, the president and Why? Secretary Why not? of State. Huh, I, I, I couldn't tell you. I, ha I couldn't tell you what's in them. <laughs> They're secret. Uh, I, I don't know precisely what it is he didn't want us to see. We know now that at least one of those two secret side deals is the document that let us know that the Iranians are going to be conducting their own inspections. That is, there'll be no American, not even an official from the International Atomic Energy Agency, conduct the on-the-ground inspections at Parchin, the main nuclear military site of the Iranians. I think he didn't want America to know that. We now do. It slipped out. It was leaked to the media. But we don't know what else is in those secret side deals. And clearly, the president looked the other way, told the Ayatollah to cut a deal with the IAEA, not to show us, so the American people in Congress couldn't see what's in those two secret side deals. Right. I mean, I think a person, a reasonable person could say if it was something he thought would help sell the Iran deal, uh, you would be given multiple copies <laughs> instead of it being... They would be released, right. sent out on Twitter, 
provided for everyone in all the world to see. Right, and not hidden as they seem to be. So I want to turn now to the migrant crisis in Europe. Of course, you've been following the news and seeing the throngs and throngs of people desperately trying to reach the West, Germany and Sweden in particular, and moving through Hungary and then points west. Uh, I want to ask you about this. What is your reaction as someone who's sitting on the Intelligence Committee uh, when it comes to national security, do you see this as something that could possibly be threatening to Western Europe and uh, potentially eventually the United States? Amy, it is uh, a real threat uh, and a real challenge. We, we all, our hearts go out to these families, m most of whom are innocent in this process, um, but too many of whom uh, could be uh, folks who intend to do harm to the West. That is, we could have bad actors inside of these organizations attempting to infiltrate Western Europe or America through this migration. America needs to move uh, cautiously and with great care before making a decision not only about whether to accept or how many immigrants to accept, but the process through which we will ensure that those who are coming to our shores are people that America wants to accept and uh, aren't here as a matter of subterfuge or, in some cases, worse yet, here with the intention to cause uh, harm or terror here in the United States. Do you think, though, that we have an additional responsibility, which is to get involved in discussions with Germany and European le leaders about these one million migrants that are making their way just this year, with another half a million each year to follow, is what Germany is saying, that they will absorb, that we can't wait until we're talking about it, migrants coming to the United States, but migrants settling in Western Europe and potentially then gaining transport to the United States. Wait a minute, we, we have to. We have to make clear to them that w we view this as a, a risk not only to them, uh, and b by the way, I think we can help them with their process. That is, I think we can uh, provide assistance, but uh, the kinds of uh, numbers that people are talking about to accept a million folks a year to think about how one might process those anywhere, uh, certainly in Europe, is, is a staggering task. Uh, but as we well know, folks who are living in Europe who are valid holders of passports or citizens of those nations often can travel here with minimal background checks. And so we've got to engage now, uh, immediately, and make sure that all of Europe understands what this means not only to them but to the world. Right. I mean, don't forget 9-11. The 9-11 plan was hatched in Germany. Mohammed Atta, of course, living in Germany, who, who led the attacks on the United States. Uh, final question, very quickly, turning to Hillary Clinton's emails. You sit on the Benghazi Committee and, of course, the Intelligence Committee as well. Uh, news coming out today from Judicial Watch that five months of Hillary Clinton's emails may be missing, that you haven't seen them, no one has seen them, they may have been erased. Is this a concern, and will you be pressing the former Secretary of State to produce those documents? I hadn't seen the reports uh, this morning. I've been out here in Kansas uh, traveling around. But I, I'm, I'm A, not surprised, and B, uh, incredibly troubled. Uh, for three years, our committee has sought to uh, undertake a simple task, to get the facts surrounding the death of four Americans now three years and three days ago. And former Secretary Clinton and her State Department have stonewalled us. Uh, they told us they had all the documents, but then realized even they didn't have them because they were on former Secretary Clinton's private server. We simply need to get access to this information. We need to do it quickly. Secretary Clinton's going to come speak with the committee on October 22nd, mm -hmm. and we need to have a chance to review those documents such that we can present to the American people the full story of how these four Americans were killed. Terrific. Congressman, thank you so much for joining us tonight. We appreciate it. Thank you, Amy. Have a good evening. Thank you. Coming up next is the Malzberg panel with Carol Roth and David Zwerdlick. This Wednesday night, immediately following the CNN debate, Newsmax is hosting a post-debate special featuring Ed Berliner, J.D. Hayworth, and Steve Malzberg. We'll bring you all the highlights from the debate with full analysis from our expert panel of Dick Morris and John Zogby. We'll also be joined by special guests Dr. Ben Carson and Michael Reagan live from the debate, so make sure you tune in Wednesday night at 10 p.m. Eastern only on Newsmax TV. And immediately following the debate,
state. Newsmax will be conducting an instant poll, and we want you, Newsmax viewers, to weigh in, judge who you feel the winner was. All you need to do is sign up right now at Newsmax.com slash judge. This will enter you as a debate judge, and results will be shared live on our broadcast. Sign up right now at Newsmax.com slash judge.